Hey, I'm Mike with vidmuse.com and today's video is going to be about Movi tips and tricks. Now, we have the M5 here, we also use the M10 with all of our aerial rigs. Now, we've decided to go with Movi for specific reasons, but we're going to cover that in another video. Now, certainly other gimbals are definitely worth pursuing, but we chose Movi for various reasons and uh, again, we'll go over that in another video. So this is tips and tricks video is today, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, Movies are known for their durability, their strength, their versatility, and their lightweightness. Uh, the engineering that went into these products is amazing, and uh, it works very well with our workflow. Now, the M5, there's a lot of just physical limitations, as in the, the physical size is a lot smaller. Therefore, you can't put on your larger cameras. So we looked over the M5 and we thought, well, there's a couple things we could do to modify it so that, yes, we can put on additional cameras that it right out of the box doesn't support. Now just a quick disclaimer before we get started. Now all the modifications that we have made to the M5, we have done with careful consideration. We've made those tweaks ourselves and the outcome has been perfect for us. Now for yourself, tweak at your own risk. Uh, we're not responsible certainly for any modifications that you make to any of your products, so don't hold us responsible. So tweak carefully. Now the M5 right out of the box comes with eight inch long vertical rods here, the 15 mil rods, for your cage. So these right here are the ones that came with the M5. They are eight inches long and so yes you can only put cameras that support the eight inches. Now some modifications we've seen with the M5 from other people is when they're trying to put a taller camera such as the C100 or C300 they will go ahead and remove the top of the cage because it will not fit on the eight inch stock rods. Now the problem with that is you're kind of sacrificing more stability because your camera only has one point of connection uh, and you want to have two points of connection just for additional stability and that's the whole point of the cage. So the first tip we're going to go ahead and suggest is go ahead and replace your 8 inch 15 mil rails to 10 inch rails. Now once we did the upgrade ourselves we could mount a C300 and it worked very well. Now, mind you, it is a snug fit, but the point is, it still worked. So, a lot of you are probably asking yourselves, well, yes, putting on a bigger camera, what about that five pound weight limit that FreeFly recommends you fly on the M5? So, with a little bit more bench testing and ground testing, we were able to successfully mount a Red Epic, Red Dragon, and even Red Scarlet here on the M5. As I've said, you are limited to the lens, so the heavier the lens, obviously you have to compensate the balance by scooting the body back, and eventually you're going to hit the roll bar back here, and then your camera will not tilt, and it will not balance correctly, so there are some limitations. But, we have been able to successfully mount a red and fly it successfully. We've done PL mounts with small Zeiss primes, as well as EF mounts, and everything's been fine. Now again, do this at your own risk. Now we believe that the weakest link here on the M5 is going to be right here on the tilt axis. Uh, the connection is not nearly as durable and as strong as the M10, so that will be your weakest link. But we have been able to put seven pounds, up to seven pounds, with a red and a lens and everything has been fine. Now, a lot of you are going to ask you, well what about the motors? The M5 motors are different than the M10 and the M15, right? No, wrong. The motors are exactly the same, so power-wise on those motors, they're all the same. Now you say, well, why is the battery so much smaller on the M5? Well, the battery is smaller in capacity, not voltage. So the voltage is the same, the capacity is smaller. Obviously, FreeFly has it smaller, so it's a little bit more lightweight, and they're assuming you're going to be flying or running smaller cameras, therefore less power is needed to autocorrect and keep things perfectly level on the gimbal itself. So with all that being said, yes, you can mount a red Epic Dragon or Scarlet on the M5, again, depending on what lens you use. Now, those of you with gimbals already understand that you have to balance everything correctly and have the CG, center gravity, correct as far as the camera. Once you have the camera balanced correctly with its CG, the tilting, you then have to get the CG of the entire gimbal correct. And that's where you're balancing everything on this pan axis right here where we're basically adjusting the entire camera body back or forward to counterbalance everything and balance it perfectly here in the center. Now on the N5 you're going to notice that the rod, the horizontal rod to the pan axis is actually keyed. Now this is where they have a piece of aluminum up top and it basically locks it so that you cannot pivot and fine tune your pan axis. 
Now this is a limitation. Well, the easiest solution was to replace this aluminum tube with 25 mil carbon fiber tube without the keyed section here. And once you do that, then you can go ahead and actually pivot and pendulum swing your entire gimbal here to fine tune the balance because sometimes it's going to be a little heavier on the left and so it's going to want to turn and you won't fully balance things and obviously we all know if you don't balance the pan axis correctly your panning will oscillate it will jerk around it will not be fully balanced now you guys can stay tuned for the next tips and tricks with movies uh, the next video is going to show you how to start and stop red remotely and which cables to buy for that and what modifications to do to make it work well and then, yes, HD downlinking. So all of us have used SD before. Now, those of you just getting started in aerial cinematography have the ability, yes, to see everything in HD from the ground. That's huge. I wish I had that when we first started, but I didn't. Anyway, next video is going to show about HD downlinking, which systems work best, and how to set them up to maintain the best, strongest signal from the ground. Now, in the meantime, if you want to learn more about multi-rotors and filmmaking and how to execute them professionally, epically, and safely, you can check out our multi-rotor tutorial series for filmmakers, which is actually on our website. The link will be down below. So if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. And go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more cool videos coming up. Now, certainly if you're in the market for buying a Movi, we highly recommend you go purchase from B&H Photo. Now, whenever we order expensive gear, we want to have a peace of mind as far as the company we're ordering from. And we've never had an issue with B&H Photo. They're an awesome company. Uh, fast shipping and great customer support so they will go ahead and take care of your needs uh, here in the movie world but go ahead they have the m5 the m10 the m15 the link will be down in the description as well again i'm mike with vidnews.com thanks for watching guys we'll see you again soon